Well, good day to you. It is December the 29th, and I hope wherever you are, you're having a wonderful day. My name is Gary Willing, and as always, I want to welcome you to Search for Signs if you are new, and welcome you back if you have been here before. But if you want to know more about this information, look into it, investigate it for yourself. The best way to do that is to click on some of those links in the description portion of these videos because they take you to websites that give you some really good, free background information about my trade of the Masters of Wisdom. So they're there for you if and whenever you want to look into it. You want to join the discussion? Post a comment. You can post your question in the comment section. You can also email me at searchforsigns at mail.com. But I did get a question that came my way from MCMC. And what did this person have to ask? Hey, do you know the book Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda? And what is your opinion of it if you know it? Just came across it. Thanks. Well, that was actually the first book that I ever read that would be considered a new age book for sure. And from what I remember how I found the book, it was actually sitting on my guitar teacher's table and we were in the middle of a guitar lesson at the time. And I was very intrigued by this very picture that I have of Paramahansa Yogananda because this was on the cover of that book. And it just, he seemed so serene, but yet calm. It wasn't a cheesy smile. It wasn't like, hey, you know, read more about my book or whatever like this. It was just this very gentle kind of Indian fellow, you know. And I started asking my guitar teacher questions about it. And then yada, 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 we didn't really pick up the guitar for months. And it was really just me reading these books and us discussing it. And not only did I read this book, and then I started reading the Alice Bailey books after that, and and then eventually the um, Benjamin Krem books and that kind of thing. So his book was really the pathway to all this information for myself. And I'm not alone in saying that because there are other people who <clears throat> have said the same thing after reading. Um, they found that book somewhere, whether it was in a bookstore or a friend's house or whatever like that, ended up reading it. The book really inspired them and changed their life. And then yada, 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 they're reading Alice Bailey and Benjamin Krem. So it's quite an extraordinary book. According to Paramahansa Yogananda, he was under the inspiration of his guru's guru's guru, who was a master, who has been a master here in this planet for hundreds of thousands of years, named Babaji. Very, very advanced master, probably on par with Maitreya, but doesn't really work with the spiritual hierarchy. I mean, they were, they're all working together, but they, they have different roles, I guess. And so Babaji won't be one of these masters that uh, Maitreya introduces, and he will be out known for who he is along like the master Jesus or the master who was Peter or the master who was Paul, or the master who was John, who will be out here working, help to rehabilitate and re, you know rebuild our structures and teach humanity directly in that way. This Babaji won't be doing that. He'll still be here on this planet for some time, but will be working from behind the scenes really. But according to Yogananda, it was Babaji's plan to bring the information about the, maybe for lack of a better word, the Indian mysticism that he reported on and he chronicled and, and journaled and those kind of things to the West and to try to bridge the gap between the the Eastern line of thinking and the Western. And, and I think Paramahansa Yogananda was the perfect person to do that because he was an Indian coming from India, but yet he, he was very um, in tune with Western line of thinking and Western thought and all that kind of stuff. And, was very able, very good at communicating and getting his spiritual ideas across to Americans and Europeans in that way. So, but a wonderful man nonetheless. According to Benjamin Crumb's own master, he was actually a very, very advanced disciple at the time that he wrote those books, uh, and was not even from. He's not even from this planet and is not here anymore. He was here for that spiritual purpose and then left. So, but the if you haven't read that book, it's a really good read. Um, I found it to be very entertaining. It's a lot more entertaining than, let's say, the Alice Bailey books that read more like college science textbooks or physics textbooks or something like that. You know, they were page turners at some in in some parts of the book. Uh, I found them very thought provoking, of course, life changing, and also very funny. He was a very funny man and very humorous man. Maybe not jokey, but 
but his stories had a lot of humor to it. And the one thing that he did talk about, and and this is one of the um, very advanced disciples who he had met uh, and talked with and wrote down some of his stories and that kind of thing. Apparently this very advanced disciple could drink poison without dying. And it was well known in his town that he could do that. And it got out that he could, his talent and his skill. And there was a reporter who I think was skeptical of his ability and came to interview him. And this reporter basically switched the drinks and gave him the poison, not telling him it was the poison, but to trick him. And this is kind of how karma works, apparently, according to um, the masters, is he gave, the reporter gave the man, the, the spiritual man, this poison, not telling him it was poison. And then once the, the spiritual man drank the poison, the reporter died instantly. And according to the masters, the higher, the more advanced you are, the higher evolved you are, the faster your karma comes back on you. But also, if you harm somebody who's very advanced, the karma comes back on you just that quickly. <laughs> so let that be a life's lesson to you, a cautionary tale of not to harm anybody anyway, but especially if they're very advanced because it's going to come back on you pretty quick. But anyway, especially if you want to see the next sunset, apparently. <laughs> now, I want to um, end this video by reading an article uh, by Benjamin Krem's master entitled The Dormant Fire. I really enjoy reading these articles, but I can't stress this enough. It's best for you to read it yourself. If you go to this international site, on the front page of that website is a little tab that says Articles by the Master. You can click on that and you can read some of these articles for free. I can't stress this enough too. You really cannot find a better way of understanding the Masters than from reading it from one of the you know, reading articles coming from one of these Masters. You can't understand Maitreya and who he is and what he means for humanity better anywhere else than you can from reading it coming from one of these Masters. You know, and that's why I like to read them out loud to you guys. But again, I'm not saying this is the best way for you to hear it and to get introduced to it. Take the time to check out that link and read some of these yourself for sure. The Dormant Fire. Before long, the world will awaken to the realization that the new age has begun. From all sides, the evidence is growing that an entirely new form of living is beginning to take root in the consciousness of humanity. More and more, the sensitive members of the race are intuiting the understanding of what it means to be human and how best to manifest that practically in everyday life. Daily, new concepts enter the mind belt and make their impact on the sensitive minds of men everywhere. Moment to moment, new awareness grows of the underlying needs of the human race as it stands at the threshold of the new cosmic cycle. Above all, mankind is realizing its oneness, its interrelationship, its need for one another, and step by painful step is moving toward that manifestation. Much there is of discord, disharmony, and strife, but the new awareness blossoms of the identity of each with each. Never has the world been so ready for change. Never has the imprint of the plan been so fruitfully received. Be prepared, therefore, to see a new sense of urgency grip those whose task it is to formulate the new ideas, give form to the new concepts, and articulate for all the challenges and rewards of the new time. Maitreya awaits this cosmic opportunity to present himself to the world. He seeks the cycle most propitious for his plans and gathers a gathers to him an army of helpers thus does the great lord summon his force to do battle with the tyranny of the past from all corners of the world those these stalwarts gather ready to place their love and strength at his command never before has such an army graced with its ardor and resource planet earth never have such multitudes answered the call to service and succor. Never till now has the need for their service, nor the prize of victory been so great. Many await with expectation the sight of Maitreya's face, the sound of his voice, the tenor of his teachings. Many thousands around the world, knowingly or not, have already seen him, heard his call, 
felt the warmth of his love. Daily that love pours forth upon the earth, kindling the self-same love that is the true nature of men, and bringing into grace all who can respond and act. Thus does the great Lord work, thus does he ignite the fire which lies dormant in the hearts of all. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos. Thank you.